Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us in this first look at Massive Darkness, our upcoming Kickstarter campaign. Uh, okay, I've started. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us again. So, what is Massive Darkness? Uh, board game with miniatures by Guillotine Game Studio, same exact uh, studio that uh, brought Zombicide and, uh, and Black Plague are the same designer and um, uh, this year they wanted to have uh, a little change in what they are doing because the, the, the Zombicide franchise is, is up and running and uh, they needed something different so we are all big fan of uh, dungeon crawler, video games, uh, Hero Quest, uh, Descent, big games where, uh, that I guess you have played already. So they wanted to, to create a, a, a game where um, you progress uh, with a campaign, and especially there is the, not the overlord uh, uh, gamer, so the, there is, as in Zombicide, there will be uh, an AI that uh, uh, will move the minion. Uh, it's, um, what you're seeing now is uh, an early prototype, uh, probably like uh, uh, we did on, uh, on uh, Black Plague, there will be a, a plastic uh, dashboard. Will there? Yeah, I, be, I believe so. I, I, hope so. I, I hope so. Yeah, hope yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> we believe so. We may. Would you like one? Yeah, yeah. Man, keep that going, dude. <laughs> okay, so okay, there so will be there will be well, one. Oh, now, now we're committed to it. Now we have to do it. Yeah. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> and um, um, it's uh, the, the the engine is. Uh, uh, truly well dealt, well developed, and uh, we uh, what we are working now is uh, really fine tuning the experience of the campaign, and uh, the where we focused is um, uh, to give uh, a huge variety of minions. Uh, one of the the key uh, criticism that we get during the development of Zombie Side is that. We were developing many heroes, so you can choose. I don't know how many heroes I we have in zombies. Hundred and eighty many, or something. Many. There are more and more survivors than zombies now. And yeah, it's uh, survivor side and all those jokes. <laughs> so, so the idea, of course, is to have a, a good selection of the classic stereotypes hero that you can play in a in a game. The, the thief, the, the the ranger, the 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 wizard, the wizard, and so on. But the idea is to, to create as many monsters as you can with different abilities and mm, whatever uh, mission you play, you can spawn this monster that will act differently. Every monster will have, we have trolls, uh, what do we have? Uh, no, we have trolls, we have demons, demons we uh, have dwarves, we have orcs, we have uh, spiders. And Cobbles? Cobbles, yeah, we have one cobble. I, I think we have one. Yeah, <laughs> we have one. Right uh, on. Probably is a, is a Kickstarter special. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, if we unlock it. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. What you see here on the table is already the, the first shot of the, of the plastic production. So uh, all the molds for the, the core box are, are ready. Nice. And nice. Just, what are you showing? Oh, yeah, the mirrors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, as you see, the, the color we have chosen for our heroes. Yeah, this is not the final color, it's yeah. just, a, just a first it's print. the same color of, of Black Plague because we expect that uh, uh, there are two separate games. We know you guys. But we know you guys. <laughs> uh, one of the, 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 the things that would be requested the most would be that uh, there is a kind of compatibility uh, with the heroes. And I will say no, and he will say please, and I will say no, and I will say maybe, say please? Uh, <laughs> and I will say ask the Magic 8 Ball, and I'll give a non answer, and let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the, you can ah, move around, this is the, the, the experience tracker. Yeah, it's the, the, the class sheet. There will be uh, six classes in the, in the game, and this is how you keep track of that. Did you? I'll go into that. So th these are not all the figures, because what we're no, missing here is the big guys. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have them yet. Uh, so th these are all the minions and bosses and heroes and, and agents, but then there are also a few of those guys, which... So I take it that's an evil dwarf. Yeah. Yes, yes, we are an evil dwarf. Chaos <laughs> dwarf. So the, the box will have uh, um, 
five big monsters. Yeah, five, five big yeah. of these big guys. Yeah, a troll, spider, uh, six little armed weird thing, uh, demon, hellhound. There is a thing with many arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mentioned it. Ah, you mentioned it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, uh, have you seen the, the, the quality of the, the, the monster of uh, the, the game The Others? So it's... Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we are aiming to this kind of, uh, of uh, detail uh, for the monsters. That means that uh, this will be the only monster that will come out in, uh, in, one, uh, in one piece. The other will be pre-assembled. But really, they're, they're quite uh, huge and big monsters. Uh, we will have, of course, uh, some um, minor expansions that we are developing right now. And, uh, but the, the good point is that in respect of figures, everything has been sculpted. Everything is uh, under uh, production now. The molds are in production. So we expect to be, uh, to be quite fast in the, uh, in the molding issue. We, we hope that we will, because the issue that we have always with the Kickstarter campaign, and this is not only with Kumi or not, but any Kickstarter campaign is that we always put a date and the date is never respected. <laughs> it's always late. And these, of course, create a lot of... Uh, frustration. Frustration, yeah, frustration. This is the word. So uh, when, when, we, uh, when we create a Kickstarter campaign, uh, we don't know where we will go. We don't know what will be the, the, the response in, uh, in the campaign. For Black Play, for example, it was, uh, it was great for million more than 4 million, four million yeah. but yeah. it was uh, uh, a production nightmare. And I can tell you that being one of the producer, because of course we, we had to create uh, at the very last days, we, we were running out of options. We had to create at the very last moment uh, new heroes, new new monsters. Bomber. And <laughs> of course, these, yeah, th oh, yeah. things, like, things like that. There yeah. he is, <laughs> there he is. Things like these. And and to get this quality, to get this kind of details, it takes a long time because the first uh, mold shot is not perfect because maybe a detail is not coming out. And it's not a, a matter of days. Uh, we have to fix it and it takes a, a lot of time. Uh, add on that that we have to produce uh, not just 5,000 games, but in case of Black Plague we had 20,000. 20,000. 20,000 just for the Kickstarter plus retail, plus uh, all the Kickstarter exclusive and so on. It takes a long time. So Kickstarter is a, is a great tool, but it's also uh, very difficult to manage. And I'm sure you have pledged many, many, many games, not only the one of Kumi or not. And you will see that uh, three, four months after the campaign is always arriving, this update. Sorry, guys, uh, we are so sad. Yeah, did you, uh, did you see the Arcadia Quest one yeah. recently? Yeah, I tried to explain Arcadia this. Quest. Yeah, yeah, I tried to tackle this thing. And we, we are kind of. Well, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah, but, uh, I, I think that Conan, Conan uh, has. Uh, I have seen. Uh, we uh, we uh, we partnered with them. You, you know, we, we have some, and uh, uh, they are producing the miniature in the same factory that we are doing our our miniatures. I can assure you that the quality is great, and I do believe that their delay is really linked to the fact that they want to deliver you the best products. So right. I, I think that uh, there might be frustration, but I assure you that uh, you will get a great game with Conan. Uh, yeah. But. Now we're talking about Master Chat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but I want to reassure you, if you pledge Conan, don't worry, it will be great, I'm sure. Yeah, I pledge as well, so it's... Uh, <laughs> I pledge yeah. too, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on that, on that update, I, I kind of mentioned that we, we are extending our delivery times a bit more, trying to be a bit more realistic. We, we're seeing what's always happened. We don't want people to be complaining and, and frustrated, so we're trying to, to create more realistic delivery times. So uh, I think you've seen this in, in the last Kickstarter, and we're trying to adjust because it's always best to have an estimate that is actually faithful to the reality. And, and this is the, what we're doing with, uh, with Massive Darkly, is really to be, to be fully prepared in the campaign, having everything ready, showing all the, 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 the art, uh, all the meals that will come out. And uh, what you can expect from this campaign is uh, a lot of monsters, uh, a lot of monsters, uh, really, a lot. I think that we have more than... 2025. I don't even know. Are more than the, the, the actual uh, core box, because the the key point of the of Massive Darkness is the replayability the monster will give you. Every time you can play a different campaign because you are just creating your own campaign. Oh, this one I want to 
play with uh, only trolls. There will be plenty of trolls and <laughs> options. Uh, this one I just want to be play with the evil dwarf. I don't like orcs. I want to be to put another another class. That that would be that would be possible. Uh, of course, we are working already on campaign. There will be like we did for the mission for zombie side. The team is already working in another campaign that we will certainly put uh, online, and uh, you will be uh, that will be downloadable. Uh, because the idea is really to give you a, a, a core box that uh, uh, is a toolbox, and every time you can decide how to uh, how to tailor made your uh, your uh, your game. Mm -hmm. uh, what well, else? Yeah, yeah. I can get into the actual mechanics of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have we start off with the heroes, and of course each hero has his hero card that gives him two special skills and which are unique to him and. The you have one, what and one 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 the thing you pass around. No, it's it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. I have I have plenty. So he has his his skills, uh, and basically what you do is you take your hero dashboard and you have your hero, and you will choose one class for it. And the, the neat thing with classes is, is hero, each hero have a suggested class, uh, which means he has better synergy with it, it gets one of the skills for free from that class, but you can choose any class you want. So you can take another sheet and you can play Whisper as a wizard or a ranger or whatever you want. And it, it'll, it'll have different effects as the game progresses. It, it will create a unique character because you're taking one unique character and combining with different things. And depending on what you buy, what you unlock, at the end of it, you will be playing something that basically no one else is playing because the path you took and what you chose and, and how you combine things will create a, your own experience. You will be using different skills as you tackle your, the challenges that come towards you. Can you? So the classes is really where most of what you're concentrating on your hero lies. So each class sheet, it, it's moving around there, it shows all the skills you can buy. So you, you're killing monsters, you're getting XP, and you're using that to buy, buy skills. And the, the neat thing is you, you're buying skills not at the end of each, each quest. You're buying at the end of each round. So you, you're evolving as the game progresses. So it, it has that kind of zombie side feel that you're getting more powerful as this scenario is progressing. You're getting more stuff, you're, being more, you're having more strategies that you can use. Uh, and the, the neat thing is that the, the tree unlocks as the, as the campaign progresses. So when I, throughout the whole campaign, I may be able to buy all these skills. But on each scenario, you also have one, an evolution because each, well, each scenario goes through all these uh, levels. So that means it's a localized evolution and a, an overarching evolution because I can, I, each scenario I will only be able to use the skills on the current level. So as we progress on the, on the mission, I, now I, I can use these skills I bought, and now I can use these skills I bought, and now I can use these skills I bought. So the more skills I buy and the further I go, the more resourceful I become. So it, it's, it's a nice balance between the zombicide style of gameplay where it's just a one-shot thing and a campaign style game where you see your character become more powerful as time goes by, kind of going in steps. You go back and forth, back and forth, and just escalating. And all of them, they all, ha all have different skills. Uh, you quickly see that the roles become very apparent, like the barbarian charging in and the wizard staying back, doing weird stuff, and uh, the ranger kind of sneaking about. So each one kind of falls within its its role, or not. You can you can choose different skills and, and play however you want. Mm. Treasure. Well, we have lots and lots of treasure cards in, in the game, and they they come in levels as well. So you, you're trying to to evolve your character, so you have your your equip slots like two hands, one body, usual fare uh, for melee, melee ranged magic weapons, and you have some powerful relics which are tied to specific objectives in the in the game, uh, things that make you extremely powerful, and uh, so you. You will get those those treasures either by exploring the dungeon. You can you will find some. It's not that it's not a, a free search. There will be uh, to uh, treasure tokens that will be spawned in some rooms, and you go there and you take those tokens, and that's what you get there. Uh, they have different levels of tokens, 
and, and you can also get treasure from the monsters. So when you kill some monsters, they will drop loot. Uh, more on that later. Uh, and, and one neat thing about, about treasure is like on the, on the ground, on the, by exploring, you will only find kind of lower level things. The higher level things you'll need to kill monsters to get. But you also can do, you can transmute items because you, there is no limit to the amount of things you can hoard without using. And as the game goes, you can kind of trade three items from one level for one of the highest of the next higher level. So it kind of creates a, a, a trickling down effect of getting less powerful stuff and turning into better stuff, getting that stuff turning into better stuff. So nothing is really useless. You, you always find some, some use for those things that have been phased out by the time you, 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 you've evolved in the, in the campaign. Now, enemies which are the, as he explained, a big part of the game. First important thing is no game master. So they all behave automatically. Uh, and they come in several different flavors. You have uh, lone agents, which are powerful on their own roaming. And they, are, they, can, also, they can call for reinforcements. Some, sometimes they will, you will spawn more, more guys that will follow him and all that. Uh, and you have the mobs. And the mobs, their size is dependent on the number of players. This game can be played solo with just one hero going against everything from one to six heroes. And the game scales to, to the number of heroes. Because the mobs, you, you will spawn maybe... A mob comes with a boss and maybe one minion per <coughs> hero. So if it's just one guy, this is a mob. If it's a six-player game, this is a mob. And one more. Here, join me. So this is a mob. But, but a, a mob of goblins might be two per hero. So a mob is like 12 minions following one boss charging at you. Uh, and of course, these minions, they, they fall down like flies, but they can be very deadly if you allow the whole thing to attack one guy. They just mow you down. Uh, it can be very deadly if you're not careful, because this game is not a, really about straight-on confrontation. Uh, I'll get to that later. Let me, let me focus on the, on the, on the, on the monsters here. You also have the roaming monsters, which are the big guys, which I can't show here. And they just show up randomly, and they just go... And the thing is, they can show up right uh, at the end of a quest, and they just, just go chasing you all the way down. So it kind of a, it's a time where you kind of... We need to deal with that guy who's running down the back of the corridor. Eventually, he'll get to us. And he's a level 4. We're at level 1. We need to prepare for that, that thing that's coming. So there's all kinds of different things happening on the board all, all the time. Uh, but everything controlled by a simple AI system. The monsters are going for the, the hero with the most experience. Uh, they try to do their movement. Once they're done, they will attack whatever they can see based on their type. It's a magic monster, a ranged monster, or a melee monster. They do different things. And then they will have their own little special things. Um, one of the neatest thing I find about this game is the guardians, which is how you can get loot from, from monsters. Because the, the monsters, they, the, not the minions, but the bosses, the agents, the roaming monsters, they carry, they, they spawn with one treasure card, which is of the level one above their own. So it can be quite a juicy piece of loot. But the thing is, it's not just loot. They're carrying it, and they might be able to use it. So you attach that card to the, to the, to the monster, and, for example, it's a random card. But if a, if a ranged monster gets a ranged card, he'll use it. So he'll be very deadly. He'll get more dice, he'll get some enchantments, he'll get all these things that you will be able to benefit from once you've killed it. So that's something that also changes up the monsters. So it's one thing to face a goblin boss, another to face a goblin boss with a fire bow or something else. So it's, it's a very neat thing to be chasing after the thing you want and that thing is being used against you. I really, really like that aspect. Can you speak later about the shadow? Hmm? The shadow. I'll get to it. A uh, little brief overview of the combat. There you can see how the how the how the card can stack with the with the monsters. You see, you have all the the four uh, kind of attack stats. You have melee, ranged, magic, and defense. And that guy has some dice in some. They have has none in others. And then when we apply the equipment on the bottom there, it, it will add to whatever he actually has. If he doesn't have one stat, it won't add to something below it. Uh, and the, the combat is. How it's rolled is it's a, it's a very each combat is resolved in a single die roll. Right? You have two different types of attack dice, two different types of defense dice. You just add those numbers from the attack, from the defense, 
roll together, cancel out, deal, deal, deal hits. And then you, you have some special symbols, the, the bams and the diamonds, which may trigger enchantments in the characters or the equipment. So it, always changing up, it could, it could come from a card, and the monsters also use that. It can be part of the monster, it could be part of the equipment it's carrying. And you also get that, you get, get something from, from your class, something from your hero, or your, the equipment you're carrying. So it's always different interactions, but all, everything resolved in a single die roll that is never bigger than 12 dice, because there's only three of each type. That's the limit, and that's it. Um, <laughs> How many dice in the game? 12. 12. Yeah, three of each, of each type, and, and that, that's that. Uh, if, you have, if you were supposed to roll more of one type, it caps at three. Uh, Shadow Mode, this is the, one of the very nice twists about this game, because as you can see on the board, you have light areas and shadow areas. And this is where this comes into play, because one of your actions can be to enter Shadow Mode. You ne as long as no monster can see you, you can enter this stealth mode, which will allow you to uh, not be fired against, they don't have line of sight on you, as long as you are in one of the shadow zones, and when they're deciding who they're going to, to go for, when they're going to target when moving, when moving, they will ignore you. They will go for the next hero in the experience order. So it's, it's a way for players to control, to hoard the, the, the monsters, get them away from someone who's wounded or anything like that. And it's a way for you to sneak about. And when you attack someone in shadow mode, in the shadows, you, they, they lose some defense, or you can get some other benefits from, from cards and all that. So it's really nice, like, you, you have to sometimes time your attack. Because if you see a, a, some guards coming, but they're in the light, don't attack them right now, because they will see you, and so maybe you go around the corner, wait for them to go into the shadows, or for you to be in the shadows, and then you strike, and they don't get to attack you back, and you deal more damage. So there's all these, it's, it's more strategic. It's not just a head-on, let's just charge in, killing guys. If you do that, you will get up to here. Uh, you, you need to think about what you're doing if you hope to get to the end of the, of, of the quest. You need to work as a group, because that's, that's the thing. If one guy says, uh, I, guys, I'm just going to charge headlong, yeah, you're going to die, and you're going to, you're going to lose us the mission. So you, you all need to decide how you're going to tackle this, split, don't split. You guys hide, you guys attract them, and then when they go for you, we charge from the side. All these strategies that you can create as a group based on the AI of the monsters and the, and the shadow mode. Whew. Barbarian doing be okay with that, right? Yeah, I'll work with you. I'll work. Yeah, it, 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 it's usually the barbarian <laughs> that kind of breaks the whole thing. Because the barbarian has a bloodlust thing. It just, it, it can charge and deal more damage, and they can't yeah. resist doing that, and yeah. it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. Although, at least quite, uh, we, we were playtesting, and the barbarian charged like a mob of, I think it was 10 guys. And he just went, and there was no, there was no one left there. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> it was pretty amazing, uh, but but don't do that. <laughs> this is his name, Leroy. And <laughs> it should be. Still time to change it. Uh, no, point, point is like uh, like zombie side. If you want to be the hero and do all by yourself, you will die. Point. And uh, the you game is. Everybody else. Yeah, and. The, the game is really, uh, it's very important to, to, to manage perf very well the shadow mode. And is, uh, this is the nice part and the tactic nice. part of the game. If you, uh, if you don't play uh, with, your, uh, with your friends and you don't, you don't plan exactly your, your tactic, I believe you will die miserably during the game. <laughs> and, uh, well, it might be miserable, it could be fun, but you'll die. No. <laughs> Uh, I think that's. I think that that's all the. Yeah. So, uh, say that we uh, we will run some play tests later, okay? Uh, with a caveat, uh, we have uh, we are really really uh, balancing a certain aspect of the game. So uh, there might be uh, some. Uh, some elements that should be refined, maybe it's too difficult, uh, because of course, uh, the more you progress with, uh, with the scenarios, uh, the more the scenarios will be difficult. So mm -hmm. if you need to play the A scenario like this gentleman did with a level one hero, well, it, did, it, did, it didn't go well. It didn't go well. And 
but this is the, the, the fun part, the, progress, uh, the progression of the heroes, the tailor-made of your heroes. You are really creating your, your guy. And because we, we, uh, we at Guillotine Games, we play a lot of RPG, and this is the fun part of the game. Uh, in Zombicide, uh, uh, for example, there is a, a progressive part, but uh, you don't use your hero later. In this case, you can. Because mm -hmm. with these, uh, yeah, you're supposed to actually write down, write your name, write your hero. It's kind of it has that classic RPG feeling of, this is this is my guy, and 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 you and you you're keeping it for a long while, and and, and when you and, die, and you cry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've been there. I've been there. Just to ask, as far as the sheets, are there going to be uh, like PDF versions? Yeah. Or yeah. Or oh yeah, of course. Like now for production, a and actually we we were very mindful to make sure the size of this, you can easily. We make sure you can print two of these in one letter or A4 sheet, okay. so it, it's optimized for house printing. Mm. We haven't decided yet if we will uh, uh, use the, the eraser. The, yeah, the dry uh, yeah, this one would require a dry erase because you need to track your wounds and track your XP, and you're always spending XP, gaining XP all the time because every every turn you can spend XP. And also you you, you also have a signature which allows you to use XP just to execute a special move that you have. No, without actually buying a skill, uh, but yeah, we. That's something where we. We're <laughs> thinking about it. It <laughs> takes it takes time. Yeah, it takes Dark time. Souls right now, they're doing that dry erase stuff on their cards and stuff, and I'm just like, I don't know about that, man. Yeah, th this is for for the for the dashboard, but that well, if if we do a plastic, we don't need that. But I don't know. We do a plastic. Plastic for stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's easier. It's easier. At the end, it might be a little bit more expensive, uh, but we have seen that uh, on Black Plague, the, the, the plastic dashboard worked very well. Yeah, because the thing is that this game is <coughs> is bursting at the seam as it is, and we need to be careful about what we what we add to it, because mm. it's, it's all this. It's, it's lots of lots of different sculpts, lots of different molds, lots of and imagine five big guys here. <laughs> So we need to be careful about it. Maybe we do it as, a, as an add-on. You can buy some, buy some of these plastic dashboards if we can't put it in the game. Sounds yeah. fine to me, man. Yeah. Um, 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 I have a, size, a question about the size of the board. Mm -hmm. Are you intending to do tiles wide or tiles long? Uh, I, I mean, how many tiles you... you uh, it, it's, more, it's, more, it's, it's more freestyle because, because the campaigns are kind of... You're kind of following a path. So sometimes it's it's a linear thing. Sometimes you have like a bridge and another tile here and another tile there. It's a bit more disjointed than what you used to with with zombie side. So you can have all different kinds of shapes. So for the, uh, the potential for negative space. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you going to have different size tiles then, or is it all going to be those? No, tiles? it's those, but there are also uh, a couple of like uh, bridge tiles so that it's just one space, that it's one straight in one turn. Uh, we can use to do a few different things outside of the tile. So correct here, and you jump over there, or you have a starting space outside there. Uh, no, it's fine. Right. There you go. So yeah, yeah, you can. It's more, it's more freestyle than than, <coughs> than than zombie side. You can do different different things with it. Will you be adding more boards as you go along? In the you know, say you start an adventure. Uh, at level one, do you add more boards to it as you go, or is it just one set amount? Of uh, the, the 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 normal thing is everything is everything is set up, okay. uh, you, and you have yeah you have you have everything there, but you don't know what's inside the the rooms and you're revealing rooms and spawning things, putting tokens, you have some objective tokens out there. There's the library. You need to find a key. You need to do all these things, and of course e each each quest has its flavor thing. Like I oh, need to need to find this big monster and draw him to this bridge and then break the pillars so the bridge falls with it because it's immortal. So it, 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 we try to be as flavorful as possible. It's not just, let's just go from here to there, killing the things on the way. It's, you need to do something. As far as the map's concerned, I thought I heard you talking about doors and stuff, and I did see a rogue in there. Are there going to be like trap doors and keys? Uh, there, there, are, there, are, there are traps. There, uh, no, the, the doors are not really about, it's, it's just to, uh, mechanic for for revealing the rooms. It's not locked doors that you need to 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 worry about. You don't even spend an action to open a door. It's just a, a marker for for evolution. But there there might be traps on on rooms and all that. Uh, Can rogues take care of those? Or? Uh, I'm not sure. 
I haven't really looked at, into all the in, interactions between the skills and the, and, the, and the doors. Not sure. There is a resurrection. You should want to die. Yeah. That's a different <laughs> game. <laughs> I got one last question. Yeah. Uh, do y'all have in mind a cleric or anything? A healer? Sure. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 <laughs> All the classes that you see in any RPG that would be covered. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah, it, the, yeah we, ha we have these six classes in the, in the core game. And. And. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kickstarter always has to Just out of curiosity, you're talking about with the, the shadows and everything on the boards? Mm hmm. I'm, I'm assuming there's probably going to be monsters that also get advantages with that. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> there, 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 there's at least one that ignores that. He can see in the dark, so he, he doesn't care about that. And uh, we'll see. <laughs> what are the chances of you giving a free copy away to somebody in the room? A free copy? This is the only copy in existence. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need to Come test. On. I need to test this. I need to see if it works. Is there a, we'll is there a, a sign-up sheet for the play test? I'd like to get on that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, I got a twenty-dollar bill to get on. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who gives more? Who gives more? Twenty dollars. I got twenty dollars. I'll, I'll, I'll buy you drinks when we play. How's that? Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll try to organize that because I, I, I feel there will be some demand. Let me know whatever you want. It's my show. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's if it's a kind of have a feel around like some besides the gonna be a crossover thing where you can like hook up some side into massive darkness. Be using the miniatures, whatever. Mm. To just kind of feel into that. It looks like the tiles could almost be used for black plague. That was mm. kinda of my like, wait a minute, I got all these tiles here, we could like Yeah, that's the, the thing. We, we made sure as 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 much as possible, we made sure that we didn't change what didn't need to be changed. So you guys can come up with whatever you want. Like yeah. the hero color, we would, it could be anything, but why not make it the same hero color as Black Plague? It's a yeah. good color and it allows something else to happen. So why not? Why, why not? So we don't want to compromise this game yeah. for that, yeah. but wherever we can, we, we want to give you the tools to have fun with it. <laughs> I was going to say, I know one of the things I like about the Besieged Kickstarter I thought was awesome was that one of the exclusive was you got the uh, Black Plague uh, card, a card for, for, for the main figures as an exclusive, which I thought that was pretty cool mm -hmm. because a bunch of uh, friends of mine, we played it where the idea was we start out using Black Plague, we use those characters, they get drawn to the village, go back to the castle, and then the siege takes place hmm. with the Necromancers. Uh, Packed it with with the creatures mm -hmm. to attack their cat to keep. Yeah, the, uh, I, I, no, no, that, that, that's that's very nice. I, I like. I, 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 I've heard people doing these yeah. crossovers between Simon properties. Like people were planning on doing like Masmora as an as a kind of test of heroes, and once they defeat the Masmora, they can move on to Arcadia Quest. So the, the heroes that succeed in Masmora, because the, the story is like that. Masmora is a test dungeon, so people are. are Coming up with all this crazy stuff, and, and we love it, and and I it. See a bunch of Vikings coming in and cleaning up shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or the troll charging against you yeah, here. Yeah, like, or the fire, the, the fire giant. Yeah, yeah. It could be quite scary. Yeah, we want to. We we want to create kind of uh, products that are close within themselves. They work within themselves, uh, and a casual player can have a nice experience of it. But we know we want to also give give you the tools to go nuts with it. That's and we love seeing all the stuff you you guys come up with. Yeah. <laughs> any Anybody has any questions oh, about it soon anything on Kickstarter? What soon. does that mean? Soon. Very it means when we're ready. It, it means too soon. Uh, before I'm ready, uh, probably. Uh, we are on the video now. <laughs> we are, yeah we're, we're doing the Kickstarter video. Yeah. We are doing all the assets. Uh, it's. Right. It's, it, it's pretty soon. It's we started <laughs> these more than one year ago, working on this one more than one year ago, mm -hmm. and it, it, it takes time. It takes time. So we would love to to launch the Kickstarter end of the month, beginning yeah, of June. Still this month. Yeah. And uh, but really, it depends when we are ready. When the campaign that we want to set up is uh, is well defined, uh, because we really um, we have many Kickstarter every year. And uh, you know they pile up, and we have to deliver. Kumi are not always deliver, and 
this so far we did, <laughs> and we will continue to deliver. But the point is to to uh, since we run the production, it's uh, actually a workload that is not negligible. And uh, the point is that we have to launch a Kickstarter when we are ready. And uh, it means that if we have to wait a couple of weeks more, but we are sure that uh, all the production and all what we are showing I is well done, that the rule book uh, is available, that the, the, the gameplay video is available, so that we don't have to, to read all the comments of people, where is the rule book, where is the video? So let's give everything immediately so we don't have to run into this kind of, uh, of comments. So the point is really, it's, uh, it's a long way. It's a, it's a huge investment in terms of molds. It's a huge investment in terms of art. And, uh, but this is the way we, we, uh, we work. We adapted a lot. Uh, when we started doing Kickstarter, uh, I remember the very, very first ones, uh, we were always in a hurry at the, at the very end because we were running out of ideas. And sometimes I have to admit that some of the last minute things that we added, they were not so cool. Uh, they were cool on paper, but not on the board. So we have to avoid that. We have to avoid that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is what we are trying every time. Every time is uh, when we launch something, uh, let's try not to invent something at the end. I always come with uh, yeah, the something. The surprises can be fun, but, <laughs> but, but, uh, but it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress because then we know for example, I give you an example on, on Arcadia Quest. Uh, there was this uh, hero uh, that uh, the, the whole uh, backers wanted. Saria? Saria. Mm -hmm. Saria oh. caused the delay. <laughs> One, figure. Yeah. One figure. And, uh, and, and this is bad. And on Black Plague, why uh, we decided to split the shipment in two? Because we knew, we knew at a certain point that with all the stuff that we had, that we would have been late. So Very late. Very late. Very how many? Uh, the, 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 the ships are coming. Eh? The ships are coming. So uh, it's uh, it's just a matter that uh, the, the the custom will uh, release them. I don't know, Marbella. When does uh, the twenty second and twenty ninth will be receiving in Georgia the container? You see. Nine okay. So at least you have a date. As soon as we get them, we will deliver. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the same is for Europe. I think more or less it's yeah. the same for Europe, Australia, and uh, and Canada. Uh, but but this is the point. We realize okay. Uh, these guys gave us a lot of money. And of course, uh, you are entitled to request your product and to protest if it's late. And so at the end, we decided uh, we meet with Marbella, with David and Chern, all the team of Kumi, and say, OK, we have the game. We have the core game. It's ready. It's Christmas time. Let's do it. Let's, let's ship it out. Thank and you all for yeah. that. Thank you. Way. But uh, it's was, it was, yeah. Now it's, <laughs> but now you are all angry because the, the rest uh, is, is late. No, 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 no but. No. No. Well, but someone is. Someone is, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> no, but, but no, it's not, no, there are no trolls. You know, at the end, you, you, you spend some money, uh, a lot of money. Some people spend really an important. And it's a matter of respect. You so, uh, money on this one too. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> My family hopes so. <laughs> but the point is a question of respect towards our clients. So, okay, it, it costs us some money to ship Black Plague in uh, before because, of course, we, we cut our margin. But it's fine uh, because we, we understand that uh, this little thing, not so little, but little thing at the end, uh, will, uh, will show that we care about you. Because at the end, uh, the, the problem of Kickstarter is that you have always the impression to give some money and then, oh my god, will I see my game, yes or no? And we don't want this feeling. We don't want this feeling. So we are adjusting. Every time that we have a new Kickstarter, we are adjusting. We're changing the way that we are packaging to be more efficient. And, uh, and for Black Plague, it was such a huge success that we had no choice to, 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 to we had to split yeah, it. Yeah, break it. And, uh, but for Arcadia Quest, we couldn't. We really couldn't. And uh, and uh, and Saria caused two months delay. On the others, we had the, the very last um, uh, Men of Faith. Yeah, and Men of Faith and the, the Sons of Ragnarok. These were last minute ad that we made, and I say, okay, probably, probably, we didn't know at the time. Probably are late because, you know, in China, there is this bloody thing that is called Chinese New Year. <laughs> Chinese New Year <laughs> is the worst nightmare that you can imagine because because China Chinese uh, China factory are like this. All these uh, factories are located in the southern part of China in Shenzhen, and uh, the the worker going there they are all all over from China. And normally Chinese New Year is January February, 
when is the week before Chinese New Year, the factory closed, but really closed, it's over. And they go back home. And then you don't know who is coming back. Really, you don't know who is coming back. And sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. If they don't come back, you have to hire new people. And these new people are not trained, so they make mistakes. I tell you that they sometimes they make incredible mistakes. <laughs> we had once, uh, uh, for a game, we had uh, all the heroes in pink. In pink. <laughs> because the guy was, wow. I don't know. He, so we have this kind of issues. And we can't make an update. Oh, you know what? We are late because the, the, the Chinese guy made uh, the, the pink mm -hmm. color on the door. We just say, <laughs> shut up. But really, Chinese New Year means that we have two months where nobody is working in China. Mm -hmm. And nobody. And this is a big issue. So when you read the update, oh, we are sorry, there was Chinese New Year, it is reality. But you can tell me. But if you know if there is Chinese New Year, why the hell do you put this kind of, uh, of deadline? And you're right. So we are trying to adjust uh, better our deadline. For Massive Darkness, I think that we will put as a delivery date uh, uh, April something like that? May or April. So probably 10, 11 months. Because we are sure that in these times when we will be able to deliver. And the molds are ready for the core box, but we don't know what the campaign will bring and what the campaign will bring. And, the, and that's the, the biggest issue that we have all the time, that maybe beggars they start, oh, I want to have this, I want to have this. And then it starts like a mob. No, we want to have this. <coughs> and we have to listen to them. Yeah. And sometimes it's okay, let's do it. If we can do it. <laughs> let's do it. And when we do it, we say, okay, we just, we are talking. Because we know <laughs> that we will be late. And then, this is a good occasion to tell you as a, as a, as a, as a, manu as a company, boring company, that we are sorry when there are, we, we are the first one who are affected by the delay. Because you can't imagine how many tickets we get in customer care. And we have to answer and everybody, oh, you're so late. Yes, we are late because we get such an amount of, and we are, it's not that we don't care, it's that it's the reality of the business. And, um, and we have to deal with that. 20,000 people alone, Black Plague, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of customer care, dude. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it be is. Be patient, people. Yeah. And then the other problem that we have, and uh, I hope that this, uh, this video will go online, is that many, many of our backers, they just don't do the pledge manager. They don't confirm the address. They, uh, oh, they write us, where is my game? And we discovered that they never confirmed the address. They never they didn't pay for made, shipping. They didn't pay for shipping. They and you know, and they get angry, they are very vocal. Right, yeah. and, and we have to explain, oh, yes, but you have to do this. Very often we have, especially from, from foreign countries that where they speak English like I speak, like I do, so very bad. So they, they don't understand what is written in the pledge manager, so they don't understand exactly how to, 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 to fill the pledge manager and they use customer care. What do I have to do? And we have to go step by step explaining them. So these are also issues because uh, then we have a warehouse uh, and logistic issue. We have some, some pledges from uh, Zombie Side One that were not fulfilled. I assure you that, because they never came back to us. And, and then they asked for it, and like, there are no more promos for that. And oh, where's my game? But Your game was here four years, four years ago. Four years ago. <laughs> so so wow. these are the kind of issues that Kickstarter is bringing. And, and, and of course, you as a client, you don't care. You don't care, but on the other hand, uh, sometimes it's not only on the on the on the on the company. It's a really uh, an operational and a logistic nightmare, and we're getting better and better on that. And because of this lady there, for example, Marbella, that she is the poor lady that is dispatching all the package in in United States. But this is a fact that. Uh, Kickstarter are complicated. And it will become a little bit sad again about it. <laughs> or <laughs> sometimes, another example, sometimes <laughs> we start getting uh, comments. You don't make any updates. I don't have any updates. Right, yeah. And uh, because we are producing the game. And uh, OK, we can come to you and say, hey, guys, we are producing the game. <laughs> we're doing the thing we're, we said we're doing. <laughs> and so I, I prefer, and this is something that we decide internally, I prefer that we don't waste our time preparing an update based on nothing update and work. Two. No updates. To, yeah? Update number three. No updates. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. Yep. And when we have something to, to, to tell, well, 
in this case, we make an update and we show you what we are doing, like we did in our Quest yeah. right now. Yeah. Well, and I have I something to report. We are getting more attention. If I make a weekly update, I don't know what, what we can write. I was. No update. Yeah, I was trying to come up with some content, some something I can show you. We have a little a mold, we have a new sample, but eventually we're just waiting for things to be produced and. No, I, we, we don't. We don't comment uh, yeah, the, the, the strategy of the company. We, yeah, we have our own right, strategy. Right, and, as, and, and you said we we want our Kickstarters. We try to make them not just a vehicle to sell a game. Right. We want to make them an event in itself. I, yeah. I always try to entertain the people and yeah. keep it fun, keep it light, keep people involved. And even with the updates, like uh, try to do something like with with a with a Saria thing, show the whole process. Just always trying to do something special, something to keep people involved entertained and make their days a little brighter. <laughs> In terms of all the Kickstarter that we uh, yet to be delivered, we are uh, uh, on production. That is a good thing that we speak a little bit of what we are doing. Uh, the others is, I think, uh, on production. Yeah, the full others speed. production is almost over on the others. It's at full speed. Yeah. Masmora, we uh, produce all the core box elements. Yeah, we, we have to print. Yeah, we just finished the, 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 the print file for the core box. We yeah. still have to do the print files for the expansions. Uh, Arcadia, we're closing the the, the, the print, uh, yeah, yeah the, the, the now that we've finished the Dragon development, we're closing the the print files. Uh, the plastic production is is is, is moving ahead, uh, so yeah, production is kind of really going to start now. The the full bore production of mm. our Arcadia Plus. Shift is uh, Sino Shift, we, we, uh, we're closing. The, yeah, the core box print files are practically closed, and then closing all the rest. But that's who we are. Yeah, that's. Do you forget any any any, any one of them? Yeah. I think that's I think yeah. that's I think that's all. So everything is. Uh, yeah, we're not sitting on anything. Wait, we're wait, trying man. to. Ultimate survivors too, man. They are. They are. Uh, where are they? <laughs> where are they? Uh, the container uh, right uh, is uh, right now in customs because we're going to get the uh, X-ray, so it delayed for us. But we are hoping early next week, Monday, Tuesday, and we'll get it. And I promise I already got all the labels, so everybody will get it. Uh, probably by the end of next week or beginning of, what is it, the yeah. max, the 15th of the, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, awesome. You're very positive. I, I <laughs> <laughs> I've got patience like a rock. Yeah. Is, is, there, is there a hand there or somewhere or there? Or something? there was. <laughs> okay. I know, it's just, hello. Okay. Uh, so that's basically... So for a six-player game with players that are experienced in the game, they, they know how to play and all that, what is your goal for an average runtime of a game? Uh, it depends a lot on, on the scenario. It, it's not a short game. Uh, it's, yeah, it's one hour would be ridiculously fast like it's if you die <laughs> well, it, it, it can be fast yeah if you lose if you lose can be very quick but yeah we're looking, 90 minutes. We're looking at 90, 90, minutes, 90 minutes 2 hours okay. something like that yeah so i saw your inserts for wolfburg and your new packaging for black plague is that the intent to go to that sort of packaging we don't we're always trying to do something different with with the packaging i just met with our, with our chinese producer and he, they always coming to us with new New, new, new ways to do things, and some games offer some possibilities. Some games don't. Uh, if we have some space, we can try to do something more fancy with uh, with inserts. Sometimes we just need to cram everything in the space we have. Uh, but yeah, I think this game, we uh, I'm sure we will try to do something cool in in the style of, of Black Plague and what we done with Zombie Side. But we don't know yet. We don't know what. Uh, we'll still try to to see how that works for this game in particular.